Hello world, my name is James. I'm the creator of AWS Cast. Uh, this is Intermediate AWS. Today we'll be creating a VPC for part of our larger uh, project that we're working on. This VPC will have two subnets, uh, actually four subnets, two private subnets and two public subnets. Uh, and along with this we'll follow some uh, best security practices for securing our applications. So the first thing we need to do is allocate an elastic IP address. Um, so we're going to go to the EC2 console, go down to elastic IPs, allocate new address, hit allocate, close, and let me delete this old one. You won't do this step. Just to prevent any confusion. All right. I'll go to now the VPC console uh, and we'll go through the start wizard, public and private subnets, select. So the VPC as a whole is going to be a slash 16 network, 65,000 plus IP addresses available. Those are internal addresses, they're non-internet routable. You know that because they start with 10. <coughs> VPC name, uh, name it whatever you want. I'm going to do uh, AWS CAS VPC. Uh, so the first public subnet will be a slash 24 network. Uh, that'll be giving me 251 IP addresses. Uh, since we're, we're going to shoot for high availability and a little bit of fault tolerance, so we're going to launch into multiple availability zones in this tutorial. So this first public and private subnet pair will go into US East 1. So public subnet one, um, and the private subnet <coughs> will be also a slash 24 network. Launch it into this is one A, private subnet one. So this is where we need our elastic IP address. This will bind to the NAT gateway, and I'll show you why we need that in a little bit. Uh, the other option is to use a NAT instance. I believe AWS has now recommended the use of the NAT gateway. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing in this tutorial. Next you hit create VPC. So this will take a couple of minutes. It kind of just sits and hangs at 47%. Be patient. Uh, it'll be, everything will be created soon. All right, now our VPC has been successfully created. Um, let's hit OK. Hit OK, all right. Um, and next we're going to go to subnets. Uh, and in here we need I, earlier I said we're going to create four total subnets. Um, the wizard will create only creates two, one public and one private. So let's add a couple more. Uh, so hit create subnet and the name will follow the same naming convention. So public subnet, if I can spell two. And the cider block will be 10.0.2.0 slash 24 create all right and one more for the private subnet too make sure you have the correct VPC selected um, we'll put this in US East B 10.0.3.0 this is also a 24 network. Create. What availability zone did I put this in? Uh, it's in 1A. Okay. Apologize. Let me delete this. So public subnet 2 I need to recreate. 10.02.024. Okay, so the reason I went back and recreated this is I forgot to select an av availability zone when I created it. Uh, if I don't and it, I have no preference, then AWS will choose where uh, to create the subnet based on load and whatever their internal algorithm is. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure my subnets are separated 
into different AZs. So we'll hit create. All right, so I'm just gonna look over my work real quick and kind of talk through it a little bit. So when we're creating these subnets, um, you'll notice that you create a subnet in the VPC. Um, that should make sense. So the CIDR address, uh, let's see, public subnet one gets 10.000 slash 24. You can see that's in one A. So private subnet one should also be in A availability zone A. Should be 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And it is. It's in USC's one A. Now let's look at public subnet two. It's in the correct VPC. Um, it's 24 network. It's in US East 1B, so a different subnet than uh, the ones. And let's look at two. Looks like it's in the correct VPC. Slash 24 network. It's in US East 1B. All right. So now that we have our subnets created, Let's make sure that we have routing set up properly. So for our public subnet one, let's look at the route table. We see that all uh, traffic is going to be directed to this internet gateway. Um, so that provides basically a network interface or an internet gateway to between the network and your virtual private cloud or VPC. Um, and then we see that traffic um, in the slash 16 network 10.0 uh, is all going to be local. So private subnet 1, uh, all, all traffic uh, not directed towards the internal network or the 10.0.0.0 slash 16 network will, go, will flow through this NAT gateway. And that's what we expect. So public subnet 2 since we created that separate from the wizard, it's also it's not going to be using our internet gateway. Uh, so we need to update that. So select public subnet 2, hit edit, and we'll change it to uh, this other route table that was created. You'll have a different number than mine, but make sure that the internet gateway is the same. So let's compare those real quick. This is IGW, ends in 706. 60F ends in 706, so that should match what we have here. 60F ends in 706, so we're good to go. And then private subnet 2, um, that should match the NAT gateway. E9 is what it ends with, and it starts with OEO. -O. So that looks good to me. And I guess the root table is the same. It's one way to compare. The next thing that we need to do is create uh, some security groups for our VPC. Now here's these security groups will provide uh, a great deal of security for our application. For example, our private subnets, we're going to launch uh, our database instance into the private subnet. And the reason is we don't want to allow any internet traffic to be able to reach our database. So what we're going to do, this security group for the database is only going to allow traffic from our web servers. Uh, and our web servers will be able to respond to responses or respond to requests uh, from the internet. So I'll show you how all of that's done. So from services, we will go to the EC2 dashboard and security groups. We'll hit create security group. So the first one we'll create is the web server SG. So make sure you have the correct VPC created. So you can only use a security group within a VPC or you create security groups inside of a VPC. Uh, so if you had something else selected, such as the default VPC, you wouldn't be able to use it, uh, the security group in what we're working on. So for a description, so for security group. Um, so for inbound traffic, 
we're first of all we're going to build a Java web app. So I'm going to allow traffic on port 80, so HTTP, port 443, which is, which is HTTPS, port 22, uh, which is uh, SSH traffic, and port 8080, just in case I run like a Tomcat server or something. I don't know, I haven't finished uh, the code for that, so I'll just leave it wide open. Um, the source, I'm going to allow anywhere in this case. So this is the source of any traffic that you want your uh, application to receive. So if you have a static IP address from your machine or your company IP address or, or you have your own network, um, so you have your own CIDR block, you could do custom and say it's like, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to give out someone's IP address on accident, so I'll do 192, this is no real routable IP address, .0.1 uh, dot zero slash 24 say I owned that block of IP addresses this would only allow SSH traffic um, on port 22 from this CIDR block that's not what I want to do in this case so I'm going to allow traffic from anywhere and finally HTTP traffic on port custom TCP rule So this will be for port 8080 in case you run some kind of Java or yeah, Java container. Um, next is outbound traffic. Right now it's configured, by default it's configured to allow all traffic uh, to any destination. I'm going to leave that as the default. Your organization might want you to restrict that um, to just the ports on which you expect traffic. So port 80, 443, 22. Um, and if you are connecting to a database instance, then you would put that security group in here. I think that's too much detail for this tutorial, um, so I'm going to leave it out. So hit create. I'm going to add a name in here because it makes it easier for me. Sorry, SG. Okay, hit create security group, security group name. This one's for the database, so uh, we'll assign this to the private VPC, I believe. So database SG for security group. Again, make sure you have the correct VPC selected. On the inbound tab, we only, remember we said we only wanted to allow traffic from our web server security group. And I realized that I need to get uh, the ID of that group. So I'm just going to copy that. So I'll have to type it again and go get web server security group. So this is the group ID. Hit create. We have the correct VPC, inbound traffic. So the source is the security group. Uh, and I know that I'm going to be running a MySQL instance as a database, and MySQL talks over port 3306, as does Amazon's Aurora. <clears throat> so either one is probably fine. Outbound traffic, I'm going to allow, again, all outbound traffic. Um, again, your organization might want to restrict this to just uh, maybe SSH and um, 3306 for the database traffic. Depends on your security requirements, what you want to do. The other thing I am going to add is an SSH rule, because I do want to be able to connect to this box via SSH, or to this any box in this network or with this group via SSH. So we'll hit create. And again, I don't know why we just have the group name. Uh, it doesn't also put that name tag there. So I add it. 